So one of the characteristics of computer protocols is that they're highly structured. And we pointed out that that was important because computers have very limited ability to sort of understand all the nuances of human speech and of speech in general. So when we communicate with each other as human beings, we have really powerful uh, language abilities, and that allows us to deal with an enormous amount of ambiguity. So for example, if I want someone to do something for me, let's say uh, I, I want to remind Greg to pick up something at Home Depot, I might say, yo, Greg, uh, don't forget the thing at Home Depot. Or I might say, Greg, remember that you need to pick up this particular thing at Home Depot. Or I might just be like, Greg, Home Depot. And that might be enough because he might remember it from before. So when we communicate with each other as people, we rely on and we enjoy these you know, really incredible uh, language processing abilities. And that's one of the things that sort of distinguishes humans from other species is how good we are with language. Computers, on the other hand, now computers are way, way better at us than cer at certain things. This phone can do math way faster than I can. But the, this computer's ability to deal with sort of the vagaries of, of language are still quite limited. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to interview this phone about uh, some of its difficulties with this particular task. So um, this is a pretty sophisticated device. It's a Google Nexus 6. Uh, and I'm going to ask it to do something for me. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to ask it in the way that it wants to be asked. For example, if I say, um, please send an email to, to my mom nothing happens, right? Because already I have to follow a protocol that this device understands. So let me try that again. I'm going to say, OK, Google. Got to wake it up first. OK, Google. Email my mom. Who is your mom? So that's the first problem. I know who my mom is, uh, but Google doesn't. Um, and so it's going to kind of get stuck here, right? So, so let me try this again. Oh, I have to get it to start over. Cancel. Okay. Get out of there. All right. Let me give it another. Let me give it another chance here. Um, okay, Google. Email Thea Werner. Sorry. Who do you want to email? Thea Werner. I still didn't get that. If you haven't tried it already, try saying just the first or last name. Now what's going on here is it's actually doing a reasonable job of understanding that I want to send an email. Um, unfortunately, it can't understand the spelling of my mom's name, and so it's not able to find her in my contact, and it's getting confused, and then it's going to tell me that I have to choose a contact. It wants me to interact with it in the way that it's used to, right? It wants me to, to touch it and to scroll through lists and things like this. Um, now what's even more interesting, and you can't see this. contact list either. You can try saying the other name, or you can pick a contact on your screen. Yeah, so it's actually doing a really good job of transcribing what I'm saying to it right now. Uh, you can't see that on the screen, but I'm watching it uh, decode my voice and uh, convert it to text. The problem is it doesn't have any idea what that text means. So let me give it a little bit more complicated command. OK, Google. Please send an electronic message to the woman who gave birth to me and who I love dearly. Since I'm having trouble finding this person, go ahead and pick a contact on your screen. Yeah, so that's not going to work, right? You know, if I told a human being to do that, they would be able to understand this. But when we interact with computers, even computers that can actually understand and transcribe the spoken language that we're, we're saying to them, we have to give them very specific instructions about what to do. And that's why protocols are so specific about exactly how two computers should interact to accomplish a particular task.